Hi, Carl here for Pro V TV, and today we're taking a look at two of Sigma's new line of cinema lenses. These are the 18 to 35 mm T2 and the 50 to 100 mm T2, the cinema versions of their popular stills lenses, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. In my opinion, these two particular lenses stand apart a bit from the rest of Sigma's cinema range. The other lenses are all full frame, a series of primes and one full frame zoom. These two lenses only cover a super 35 mm sensor, just like the stills lens versions do. But that means you get a longer focal length than the full frame zooms and that fantastically wide max aperture of T2. Having T2 zoom lenses at this level is unheard of. We've had several advancements in the low end cinema zoom world recently, with Fujinon's 18 to 55 mm and Canon's 18 to 80 mm and more, but none of these lenses have managed to get down to T2. This means you can let in far more light and of course get a shallower depth of field. So it's the T2 max aperture that really makes these lenses special and stand apart from the crowd. Now that wide aperture does come with a bit of a trade-off. Well, my first impressions with these lenses were that they were quite heavy. The 18 to 35 weighs about a kilo and a half and the 50 to 100 comes in at 1.8 kilograms. This isn't really that heavy in the world of cinema zooms. PL mount lenses like Canon's CN7 and Fujinon's Cabrio lineup often weigh nearly three kilograms. So if you come from that world, the Sigmas will be really light. However, if you're used to using smaller stills lenses, these are going to feel quite heavy and substantial. They do, however, feel fantastically solid and robust. These should be real workhorse lenses for you and really stand the test of time. The lenses are clearly marked on both sides to make life easy for your assistants. They have a nice 180 degree focus throw, which I found very easy to pull focus with when I used them on the Ursa Mini Pro video, even though I was doing it by hand with no follow focus. I was surprised to find that the zoom ring also has a 180 degree throw, which means that it takes longer to zoom but it does mean you can be quite accurate with your focal lengths. So for narrative work, particularly if you're doing visual effects when things like that are quite closely monitored, that could be a really, really nice touch. So let's take a look at how they both perform optically. Both lenses seem very sharp, even wide open at T2. It looks like there is some slight vignetting on both lenses when wide open, but nothing too serious. Now we move on to focus breathing, and this is where we can really see the difference between the two lenses. The 18 to 35 mm has very little focus breathing, both at 18 and at 35 mm. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for the 50 to 100. As you can see here, this lens does breathe quite noticeably, particularly at the wider 50 mm end. This is a shame and is the main flaw with this lens in my opinion. It's certainly not a deal breaker though. The lens still has lots going for it after all, but it is something you'll need to be aware of when you're out there using it. A lot has also been said online about whether or not these lenses are truly parfocal. And general consensus is that technically, they're not guaranteed to be parfocal. As you can see here though, they basically are. And so I would treat these as if they're parfocal lenses. Yes, different lenses, different models might be slightly different in terms of quality. They're not gonna be uniform, but they're close enough for me. These are lovely lenses. There's no doubt about that. I really did enjoy using them and I was very, very pleased with the results. They're not perfect, but then what product is? At the end of the day, these are affordable cinema zooms with a T2 aperture, and we have to keep that in mind. They're basically the only option you have if you need fast cinema zooms on a budget. 
So for that reason, I think these will be very popular lenses indeed. But what do you think of the Sigma Cine Zooms? Let me know in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video.